Hello, my name is Vesa Yvonen, and in this video we will have a closer look how we can automate the personal MySite branding configurations within the Office 365 by using a provider hosted app. Let's first have a closer look on the, on the uh, MySite structure uh, slightly uh, from the Office 365 to actually explain what we need to do and, the, uh, and why the code is doing certain things. And then we're going to walk through the code, deploy our app and make sure that it's actually fully functional. So this is the person on my site in, in Office 365. We're able to actually see that uh, from the URL. So we are in the Office 365 in the address of Yona, mysharepoint.com, and that's my dev tenant, what I'm using for, for testing. Um, and you're able to see that it's pretty much the out-of-the-box uh, my site experience. We have the out-of-the-box uh, bluish uh, branding applied, uh, which is the Office theme, um, and there's nothing uh, that's special within the site. Um, the key point uh, with the my sites is that we need to remember that my sites actually consist from multiple multiple different site collections. So this is the private, uh, sorry, the public my site, um, public my site host, which is dynamically changing its content based on the user who is accessing the site. So if I go to the, if I'm if refreshing this page or I, if I actually take an alternative uh, browser session, I'm able to actually see that the, even though the address is the same, uh, we are at the, the uh, yonasharepoint.com personal. Let's actually go to that same site. So let's go to the person, person ASPX site. And we're able to see that the Dan Jump, uh, he's a pretty young dude, uh, is actually accessing the same address, the same site collection. So we are at the, at the person ASPX and account name uh, and so on. So the page itself uh, changes changes based on the user who's actually accessing the site. Now, when we go to the uh, person on my site, so let's move that one away, uh, and if I go to the SkyTrack Pro, or if I go to the tasks, uh, which is on the personal site collection sign, it means that we are able to see from the URL that the person on my site is actually slightly, uh, the URL is slightly different. So from the personal my site, we're able to see yonamysharepoint.com slash personal slash veskoyona on microsoft.com. And if we take the other fellow with us, uh, let's actually have a look on that one as well. It's, it is actually in a completely separate site collection. So the URL is essentially uh, changing based on the particular user. And that means that it's a separate, dedicated site collection. And this is where, where, uh, why the managing of the branding is essentially slightly difficult uh, for the my sites, because for every user accessing the my site, uh, the user will get uh, its own site collection created. So it's not enough that you go uh, to a one single site collection and modify the branding, because we actually have multiple different site collections to manage, and that's where the challenge is. Uh, well, uh, our well, our, our my site challenge actually comes from. In SharePoint 2010, in on-prem, in a farm solutions side, this essentially was managed by by uh, creating a farm. Uh, stapled feature in a farm level or application level, which then manipulates uh, those settings within the personal my site or, or applied master page or set to theme. But in, in 2013, or especially in Office 365, we're unable to do feature stapling because feature stapling, we cannot do feature stapling on the higher level, uh, in a tenant level or in a farm level with Office 365. So therefore, we need to take an alternative approach. But we do actually have much, much, much more powerful APIs than in 2010. And we're, so we're able to achieve this pretty, pretty easily. So let's actually have a look on the code so uh, and have a look on the structure, what we have implemented. Uh, this is downloadable from the blog post, uh, which is linked to the video as well. So feel free to download this, feel free to utilize it any way you want. Um, this example is a pretty typical provider hosted application. Uh, so it has a, a two different projects. It has the SharePoint project, which is the app file, and then it has the, the actual provider hosted application, which is a web application, web project, which can be then hosted uh, in the Windows Azure, or if you're running in the on-premises, you can do that in a random IIS application or IIS platform. It could, well, it's, it shouldn't be a random, it should be a dedicated to at least two Windows servers where you have then load balanced and high available environment, how you do that. In Windows Azure, the settings are slightly, slightly different and we'll have a look on uh, how the, these things are set up in Windows Azure 
uh, in a separate video. So have a look on the on the on the blog post and and channel if you are interested about that. But let's concentrate on the code. So what we do in our code is that we we essentially uh, take an instance on the particular users. Uh, users user profile so we're using this one is for implemented using visual studio 2013 and then we're using this uh, client api uh, which is the user profile client api so you need to get a reference on that particular dll uh, for your web application uh, well obviously you need to have the reference to the client client runtime and then the user profiles client api and that will give us the opportunity to get access on the particular user's user profile which means that then we are able to actually check from that particular user profile is the personal site available. So we're getting instance on that site collection, which is the personal site. Uh, and we are executing that query. And after that, we can see that if the, the site collection is available or not. If it's not available, let's queue uh, that site collection creation. So this is essentially the same thing as for out of the box experience. So in the public my site host, we have hidden web parts, which are essentially doing the exact same thing. When user first time goes to the public my site, it will queue uh, the, the personal my site creation. Whenever then the my site is actually available, uh, we will get an instance uh, on the personal my site, load that. Uh, we will check uh, that have we already processed this particular my site. So this is for just for optimizing, so we don't reprocess uh, the my sites numerous times or every single time that the, the app part or the base is requested. Um, so it's it's optimization thing because we are actually uploading files to the site as well. So first thing what we do here, which is a small change on my previous example, is that we deploy the theme to the web. So let's have a look on that. So what we do here is that we essentially upload the required SP color, SP font, JPEG files, which we will then set as the theme uh, for that particular web so that we get that alternative UI experience uh, for the end users. And, and where do we actually upload them? So let's have a look on, on the SharePoint Designer. So what I've done is that I open up a SharePoint Designer uh, to that my personal, uh, personal my site on the SkyShare Pro, uh, depending to terminology. Uh, the my site is a pretty well old school SharePoint people call it my sites. Uh, the new school SharePoint people call this Kytra Pro marketing statements anyway. Um, so if we open up the site, SharePoint Designer is a, a nice tool to actually have a look on the structure. Uh, it combines uh, what we have on a file system and what we have on a database. So it gives that full view on the virtual file system uh, for the site. And underneath every single site, we have a catalogs. We have within, within the catalogs, we have theme and themes and 15. And this is actually the location uh, where we have those out of the box uh, theme files. So out of the box theme files, which we can use whenever we are selecting a theme. So even though it's, it's a my site, we actually have all of these themes available. What do we mean with even though it's my site? So let's have a, have a look on that. So quickly, uh, explanation on the theming systems. So let's go to our IE. So this is out of the box theme site or dev site to be honest. Uh, but for out of the box dev sites, we have this change to look uh, capability under look and feel. And that's for you to choose what kind of UI or theme or colors uh, you want to actually use. It's well, it's not just colors, it's the colors, fonts and a background image. And so it's slightly more uh, dynamic than what, what we had in, in 2010 related on themes. But then if we have a look on the same setting in your private my site, so let's go to our SkyTrack Pro. Here we go and let's go to site settings. We're able to see that that particular setting is not actually there. And why is that? Well, the whole point of this one is that we, we try to promote consistent look and feel across the my sites as well. So the, my, the theme sites are slightly more dynamic, ad hoc, people can do whatever they want with them. But quite often our, our end our customers would like to have a consistency across the my side experience. And also the fact that if you would be able to change the look and feel on your personal my site, then when you move back on your on your public my site, if you go back on the newsfeed, which is again on a different URL, now we are in that public my site, 
the experience would be different. And I'm going to show this one in practice uh, when we're executing the code. And that's the reason why in the SkyTrack Pro that setting is not actually available. But we are able to do that using the code. So let's go back on the code, have a look on that. So we're deploying those files. We're actually adding a, a new, uh, new theme option to the site entry as well. This is, to be honest, that's not uh, even needed, but it's it's for storing theme information uh, with the name of Contoso. I'm adding that there if you want to copy this code and use that without the box theme site. So you're able to then choose from a selection also the theme, uh, Contoso theme. But in my site that mentioned uh, that it's not actually available. Let's scroll back on the app. So what do we do next? Uh, files have been deployed. Then we set the color, font, and background image uh, URLs. And essentially, we run the apply theme command. And this is what we, well, essentially setting the theme. So we, in 2013, we don't apply a theme using a red theme. Uh, let's call actually that Contoso theme. Uh, we don't actually set the theme using a specific uh, name. What we do is that we set a theme by setting these three options. Uh, you can set the background image or leave that uh, null if you want. But in our case, let's modify that one as well. And then what I do is that I store a, a version number or a custom entry uh, to the property back of the private my site. So I'm essentially marking that my site now uh, to be having that custom branding version 1.0. Uh, and how do I actually do that? Let's have a quick look on that one as well. So what we do here is that we set uh, set the my site marker back in the property backs of the site with the value of one. That was the given value for the settings. And this will give me the opportunity then to trace back. Uh, I can change then the setting uh, or upgrade based on the setting, this setting as well. So I can have a, a really easily, I can update this code, what we have uh, in this provider hosted application. Uh, to modify then the setting to the version 2 or version 3 or whatever. So I'm marking that site to be processed so that we don't uh, reprocess the site uh, all, uh, all the time when the page is requested. Uh, and then writing the debug information if needed. I'm going to uh, explain that slightly uh, with the app part. So, so there's a special uh, app part uh, setting which we will uh, which we'll, we'll walk through. The one thing that I almost forgot to explain is that where do we actually get those files, what we upload, so deploy the theme to web. So in this particular case, what I did essentially is that a pretty pretty simple thing. As part of my provider hosted application, I'm actually having those deployment files. So I'm just dynamically deploying them. You could just as well store these deployment files in, in Windows as your blob store um, or wherever location you actually want. It, it's completely up to you how the code works. In my case, they are actually part of the provider hosted application. Um, so whenever I need to modify them, I need to uh, redeploy then a newer version of my provider hosted application to the Windows Azure. So it's not necessarily the best possible option. You might want to decouple them to the storage. Uh, but again, how often does your theme change? So I think that's the key design dis discussion or, or question. Uh, if your theme is consistent uh, for one year, maybe this approach is fine. If your theme is changing all the time, maybe you want to put them in a SQL Azure storage for that. Before we actually start using this, uh, so this is a, a implemented in a way that the default ASPX it doesn't actually do a thing. It just mentions that this page, this app, uh, is implemented in a way that you should put a, a app part on a site, and the app part is then actually the one which is doing the modifications. And here's the app part or client web part definition within the app. <clears throat> Let's have a look on that. So within the app file, I have a personal site branding client part. And within there, we are calling that personal site branding ASPX page, which is essentially doing all that magic which we just went through. Well, it's not magic. It's just calling the right APIs in the right order. Um, this particular app part uh, has a, a property called debug. And it's essentially there that uh, if it's enabled, it shows debug information whenever rendered. So by default, this is designed to be a app part which we can place anywhere in the tenant. It could be a team site, it could be a front page of the ship uh, intranet. Uh, whenever the user accesses that page, that app part is never actually rendering anything, but it's running that client side API. So uh, making sure that for that particular user, we have the right branding applied on the my site. 
So it's actually also a nice tool to, to then modify the my site branding. So you can keep that part in the front page of the intranet. Um, you just deploy a new version of the of the provider hosted apps, and whenever the people actually arrive on the intranet, their my site is rebranded, or they they my sites uh, has a new branding applied. So it's pretty convenient pattern actually to modify that. Let's deploy that uh, to the site. Uh, so let's make sure that everything is up and running. Uploading after the SharePoint, it is updating the, the client ID. I'm using a dev uh, site template for this deployment. Uh, and in a different video, uh, kind of mentioned already, I will show how how put this one in a window just here and how, do, how we can start using that in a real production usage. When I install that, it is asking what kind of settings do you want to do. Uh, and in this case, we have to actually have pretty high permissions because we're operating across site collections. So we do have a, a tenant level permission set uh, and also manage level permissions for the user profile. Clicking trust it uh, and the app has been installed and we're redirected to that full immerse experience, which is the full page experience. Kind of related on that, I mentioned that it's requesting tenant permission because it is operating cross-site collections because I'm setting those property back entries in the root web. Um, that's essentially the reason. Um, but now the the fact that it actually has the tenant permissions means that it cannot be uh, released as a storage uh, or SharePoint store app. But you can certainly put this in the corporate catalog. So you can release this as an in-house development or, or outside of the, the SharePoint store app. So it's a completely supported scenario and a fully functional as such. Um, it is mentioned here that it is a proof of concept code, which is not to be applied to production as such, rather used as an example. So feel free to utilize this any way you need. Uh, please remember that this has been tested uh, just by me in my environment. Uh, so this is given to you as a reference. You can use the code any way you want. You can further enhance the code, um, but please test it fully uh, for your production usage as well. Let's go to the front page and put that app part into action. So let's actually put that app part on the page, edit, and uh, putting that app part on the page, app part, personal site branding, at. And there goes our app part. It will pick up my well, Visual Studio because we're in a debugging mode and we're able to then walk through uh, some of that code. I've kind of already walked through the key parts of the code, so I'm not going to, we're not going to actually spend too much time on it. Uh, oh, it didn't actually, there, there was no breakpoints. So this is, uh, this is the app part in a debug mode. What it means is that it's, it is essentially telling us uh, that the my site existed, it has that additional branding elements uh, for the app part. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, we also uh, had this capability added for the app part, so we're actually able to get rid of that one. So this is just for demonstrational purposes, obviously. Uh, but let's actually have a look on that. So in the configuration, show debug information, Gonna scroll, zoom in. So if I'm taking that one away, it means that we can actually hide the app part completely. Uh, actually, let's slightly more adjust that. Do an edit web part, and let's get rid of the the Chrome type as well. So this would be the the way it is added on the front page of the intranet. Uh, so that the end users would never even know that there is this functionality included. So it's kind of a hidden uh, season a remote modifier modification tool against your private my sign. Like you saw, the ex we executed already the code, so that means that if we go to our sky drive, uh, our uh, personal my site uh, has been modified. So it, what it means is that now our, we have this custom branding applied. Uh, we're able to see uh, black; it's not blue anymore. We're able to see background image. There's some uh, really well probably can't see those, but there's a background image on the background as well. So we have applied whatever uh, custom Contoso branding we are creating. Now, we do have one catch though here. So so let's actually uh, walk on the on the newsfeed. So let's go to this. This is the personal site collection. So now if we go to the newsfeed, this demonstrates why the theming is not available in my site. As you can see, now the user experience is pretty strange. So you move across the functionalities between newsfeed and let's say tasks. 
the user experience is moving and the coloring is moving. And this is why the theming is not available as a setting in your site settings. So we need to also make sure that within our public my site, we have the custom branding applied as well. And as part of that, uh, you could obviously write some uh, app part for that one as well. But what I did for, for this one uh, is that I implemented a small console application because this is essentially a one-time uh, one time thing. Uh, let's make sure that we set uh, the right settings. So I'm actually, I'm, well, I'm now put doing a, a out-of-the-box settings, out-of-the-box coloring. That's completely fine. And let's actually take the, the one custom image there as well. So this is a console application which has been uh, developed uh, using essentially the exact same th uh, model. We're using client-side uh, client -side runtime. I don't need to have a setting uh, for the user profile because I'm not accessing user profile. What I'm doing is that I'm uh, accessing that uh, public my side and setting branding for it. Uh, so let's execute this one to get that bluish branding away from the public my side. It's a one-time execution, so that's the reason why it's executed like like a console application. Give Office 365 site. Let's actually have a look on that. Uh, just want to double check that I, I get the right URL. I just can't remember the URLs properly. There we go. And let's actually copy that one in. Paste. There we go. It is asking then my SharePoint user profile. Uh, oh. Uh, sorry, uh, username. So let's call that Vesco at Yona on Microsoft.com and then the password Leikkonen and uh, then let's actually put a breakpoint. Where is it actually executing? There we go. Put a breakpoint there. 